Welcome to my channel. Today, we are diving deep into the world of one of Shakespeare's most intriguing plays Macbeth. Join me as we explore the dark and tragic tale of ambition, power, and the consequences of one's actions. Get ready to unravel the complex characters, analyze the themes, and discover the timeless allure of Macbeth. Let's begin our discussion with Act 1 of the play. On chilly Scottish grassland, Macbeth and Banquo, two of King Duncan's generals, discover three witches. The witches predict that Macbeth is going to get promotion twice, to Thane of Corda, a rank of the aristocracy bestowed by grateful kings, and King of Scotland. Banquo's junior is going to be king, but Banquo isn't promised any kingdom himself. The generals want to listen to more, but the three witches fade away. Soon afterward, King Duncan names Macbeth Thane of Corder as a gift for his success within the recent battles. The promotion seems to support the prophecy. The king then proposes to form a quick visit that night to Macbeth's castle at Inverness. Macbeth's wife receives news from her husband about the witcher's prediction and his new title. She vows to assist him to become king by whatever means are necessary. In Act 2, Macbeth returns to the palace and later came King Duncan. He and his wife plot together to kill Duncan and wait until most are asleep. At the chosen time, Macbeth's wife gives the guards doped wine so Macbeth can enter and kill the king. They have decided to blame the guards for the king's murder in the morning. He regrets this soon, but his wife reassures him. She leaves the bloody sword by the dead king and left just before Macduff, a nobleman, arrives. When Macduff discovers the murder, Macbeth kills the drunken guards during a show of rage and retribution. Duncan's sons, Malcolm and Donabane, flee to England and Ireland respectively, fearing for his or her own lives, but they are nevertheless, blamed for the murder. In Act 3, Macbeth becomes king of Scotland but is suffering from feelings of uncertainty. He remembers the prediction of witches that Banquo's junior will inherit the throne and kill Banquo and his son Flaunts. At night, Banquo is murdered, but his son escapes the assassins. Macbeth becomes fierce, as long as Flaunts is alive he is insecure about his power. At the dinner night, Banquo's ghost visits Macbeth. When he sees the ghost, Macbeth freaks out, surprising his guests, who include the great Scottish nobility. His wife tries to compensate for the damage, but Macbeth's aristocracy incites increasing resistance from his nobles. After that Macbeth goes to visit the witch sisters in their cave. They show him a sequence of demons and spirits who present him with further predictions that he must beware of Macduff, a Scottish nobleman. In Act V, the witches also told him he cannot be harmed by any man born of women and he is going to be safe until an area would. Burnham Wood comes to his castle. He now feels secure as he knows all men are born from women and the forest does not travel. Macbeth then came to know that Macduff has departed for England to join Malcolm. He ordered to seize the Malcolm castle and kill his wife and children. The news reaches Malcolm in England he was deeply hurt and vows to take revenge. Duncan's son Prince Malcolm, was successful in building a military in England and Macduff joins him and they move to Scotland to challenge Macbeth's forces. This invasion was supported by Scottish nobles who are petrified by Macbeth's murderous behaviour. In Act We, meanwhile, Macbeth's wife develops a disease in which she night walks and grieves over bloodstains on her hands. One day before the invasion Macbeth receives the news that his wife killed herself. This led him under deep pessimistic despair. Even though he waits for the English army and believes the witcher's prediction that he cannot be conquered. He was filled with fear when he came to know that the English army is marching ahead to Dinshinane with boughs cut from Burnham Wood. This makes him realize that half of the witcher's prediction is falling correct. Later on the battlefield, Macbeth fought violently but his army and castle were conquered by English forces. In the war, Macduff told him that he was not born of women but was premature and born caesarean. He realizes that he is cursed still he fought violently until Macduff cut his head. Malcolm now becomes the new king and declared his humane intentions and invites everyone in his crowning. Now let's do the analysis of characters of the play. Macbeth. 
Macbeth is a Scottish general in the Thane of Glamis who is led to wicked thoughts by the prophecies of the three witches, especially after their prophecy that he will be made Thane of Coder comes true. Macbeth is a brave soldier and a powerful man, but he is not a virtuous one. He is easily tempted into murder to fulfill his ambitions to the throne, and once he commits his first crime and is crowned King of Scotland, he embarks on further atrocities with increasing ease. Ultimately, Macbeth proves himself better suited to the battlefield than to political intrigue, because he lacks the skills necessary to rule without being a tyrant. His response to every problem is violence and murder. Unlike Shakespeare's great villains, such as Iago in Othello and Richard III in Richard III, Macbeth is never comfortable in his role as a criminal. He is unable to bear the psychological consequences of his atrocities. Lady Macbeth. Macbeth's wife, a deeply ambitious woman who lusts for power and position. Early in the play, she seems to be the stronger and more ruthless of the two, as she urges her husband to kill Duncan and seize the crown. After the bloodshed begins, however, Lady Macbeth falls victim to guilt and madness to an even greater degree than her husband. Her conscience affects her to such an extent that she eventually commits suicide. Interestingly, she and Macbeth are presented as being deeply in love, and many of Lady Macbeth's speeches imply that her influence over her husband is primarily sexual. Their joint alienation from the world, occasioned by their partnership in crime, seems to strengthen the attachment that they feel to each another. The Three Witches 3. Black and Midnight Hags, who plot mischief against Macbeth using charms, spells, and prophecies. Their predictions prompt him to murder Duncan, to order the deaths of Banquo and his son, and to blindly believe in his own immortality. The play leaves the witches' true identity unclear, aside from the fact that they are servants of Hecate, we know little about their place in the cosmos. In some ways, they resemble the mythological fates, who impersonally weave the threads of human destiny. They clearly take a perverse delight in using their knowledge of the future to toy with and destroy human beings. Banquo. The brave, noble general whose children, according to the witch's prophecy, will inherit the Scottish throne. Like Macbeth, Banquo thinks ambitious thoughts, but he does not translate those thoughts into action. In a sense, Banquo's character stands as a rebuke to Macbeth, since he represents the path Macbeth chose not to take, a path in which ambition need not lead to betrayal and murder. Appropriately, then, it is Banquo's ghost, and not Duncan's, that haunts Macbeth. In addition to embodying Macbeth's guilt for killing Banquo, the ghost also reminds Macbeth that he did not emulate Banquo's reaction to the witch's prophecy. King Duncan, the good king of Scotland whom Macbeth, in his ambition for the crown, murders. Duncan is the model of a virtuous, benevolent, and far-sighted ruler. His death symbolizes the destruction of an order in Scotland that can be restored only when Duncan's line, in the person of Malcolm, once more occupies the throne. Macduff. A Scottish nobleman hostile to Macbeth's kingship from the start. He eventually becomes a leader of the crusade to unseat Macbeth. The crusade's mission is to place the rightful king, Malcolm, on the throne, but Macduff also desires vengeance for Macbeth's murder of Macduff's wife and young son. Malcolm, the son of Duncan, whose restoration to the throne signals Scotland's return to order following Macbeth's reign of terror. Malcolm becomes a serious challenge to Macbeth with Macduff's aid, and the support of England. Prior to this, he appears weak and uncertain of his own power, as when he and Donabane flee Scotland after their father's murder. Hecate. The goddess of witchcraft, who helps the three witches work their mischief on Macbeth. Flaunce. Banquo's son, who survives Macbeth's attempt to murder him. At the end of the play, Flaunce's whereabouts are unknown. Presumably, he may come to rule Scotland, fulfilling the witcher's prophecy that Banquo's sons will sit on the Scottish throne. Lennox. A Scottish nobleman. Ross. A Scottish nobleman. The murderers. A group of ruffians conscripted by Macbeth to murder Banquo, Flaunce, whom they fail to kill, and Macduff's wife and children. Potter, the drunken domain of Macbeth's castle. Lady Macduff, Macduff's wife, 
The scene in her castle provides our only glimpse of a domestic realm other than that of Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. She and her home serve as contrasts to Lady Macbeth and the hellish world of Inverness. Donna Bain, Duncan's son and Malcolm's younger brother. That's all for today's video. I hope you found this explanation enjoyable. If you liked it, please consider sharing it with your friends, giving it a thumbs up, and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.